Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Terry, and today I'm going to be doing a reverse stamping tutorial. Y'all asked for it, so I'm giving it to you today. This video is all about reverse stamping. If you're new to stamping, be sure to check out my first video I did for beginners so you can see the basics of stamping. This tutorial is a more advanced form of nail stamping, so be sure to check out that other video before you start this one. So, for the supplies we need, a stamping plate, we need some nail stampers. I have a variety of different clear nail stampers here. Clear nail stampers are best for reverse stamping because they're the easiest to use and you can see where you're placing the design on your nail. I like to use several stampers at once so I can do several designs at once. You also need a small nail art brush or a small dotting tool. That would work as well. I will link the nail art brushes I'm using in the description box. You also need some sort of sticky base coat. I like to use Orly Bonder. Um, a lot of people have this base coat, um, but Maniology also has a sticky base coat that you can use. And you'll need a variety of different stamping polishes and nail polishes to fill in the design. So you can fill in the design with regular polish or stamping polish. It's up to you. A lot of stamping polishes you buy from certain companies can be used as regular nail polish as well. Next you'll need a nail scraper. This is the one I like to use, but any one you have will work. And then you're going to need some form of scotch tape or a lint roller. Like I said in my last video, my lint roller is on its last sheet. So I need to get a new one. You could also use scotch tape. You'll also need some cotton balls. And I have this little claw that I got from Sally's that I like to use to clean off my stamping plate. But if you don't have this claw, you can just use a cotton ball and you need some acetone. I like to put my acetone in this little pump bottle. It makes everything super easy. So I'm going to be using two different stamping plates. I'm going to start off with this Minions stamping plate. I'm going to start off by removing that little clear film that's on top of the sheet because this is a brand new plate to me. So make sure you remove that if your stamping plate is new and you want to clean off the entire stamping plate with some acetone and a cotton ball to make sure you remove any sticky film left over from what we just removed. Alright, so when you're doing reverse stamping, you want to kind of get an image that has an outline that you can fill in. Hopefully that makes sense. You see there's a couple images on this plate, for example, the music symbols, that there's no outline. So whatever stamping polish you use to stamp those images, it's just going to be one color. You need something with an outline that you can fill in the image. Hopefully that makes sense, and you'll kind of see when I start stamping different images. So we're going to start off pretty simple with this small image. When I'm doing reverse stamping, I typically always use a black stamping polish to scrape the image because it's just, it makes the other colors pop. So I was having a little trouble picking up this image, but I still wanted to include that in the video. Just so you know, like stamping is kind of like trial and error sometimes. So all I'm doing is cleaning the plate again with pure acetone and just, you know, stamping the image. Sometimes if you don't scrape the image properly or sometimes if you don't put enough nail polish on the image, it just doesn't pick up well and it's okay to redo it. That's the great thing about, you know, clear stampers. You can kind of see what the image looks like when you put, put it on. But I'm just redoing this image. Also, sometimes it's just how you pick it up. So maybe, depending on the stamper, you have to roll it. Sometimes you could just push it straight down. Sometimes the stamper is not that good. So you just have to kind of repeat the image. But I was happy with how it came out the second time. This is what it looks like before we fill it in. And you can see there's some areas where we could add color to. Okay, so I'm using a different nail stamping plate. This is from Uber Chic. I'll link it in the description box. So I'm going to take a full nail image this time, and this is actually a layering plate, but you can also use it to reverse stamp. So I'm scraping the black nail polish over this image, 
And when I pick it up, you can see there's areas where I can color in the nail polish bottles. And I'm planning to do them in different colors. And I use a different stamping. I use a different stamper this time. This one's from Maniology. And you can see I have some extra images that I don't want on the stamper. So I'm taking some tape. You can also use a lint roller, whatever you have that's sticky. I'm just going to remove extra stuff that I don't want on my nail stamper. And I'm going to pick up one more image for us to fill in. So I have three different stampers with three different images. And then after I stamp the polish, I kind of like to let the black stamping polish sit on the stamper for three to five minutes to let the black nail polish dry. This will help prevent you from smearing the black nail polish while you're filling in the other nail polish colors. So that's why I'm stamping all the images first, letting them dry, and then I'm going to go back to my first image and start filling it in. So again, I'm going to take my scotch tape and just remove any little bits that I don't want on my nail. So now it's time to fill in the image. I'm using this color, this regular nail polish color by OPI. And I like to put a little bit of nail polish on like a little piece of plastic. Sometimes I use foil. Sometimes I use the stamping plate. Whatever you have, just drop like a you know, a little drop of nail polish and take your small nail art brush or sometimes I like to use a dotting tool. It depends on like what kind of area I'm filling up. It's good to have different size brushes. So the bigger the brush, the easier it is to fill in larger images. And then if you have really skinny images, it's really good to use a small nail art brush. So when I'm painting in the image, it's really important not to drag the nail polish over the black lines too much because you can smear the lines. And I did end up smearing it a little bit on this lollipop because it has little black lines in the center. So it's best to kind of have like a little ball of nail polish on your brush or your dotting tool and kind of float the polish over the design. So you're not dragging it on the design because you can mess it up that way. You know how you like float a top coat on top of your, your nails? You want to do the same thing. You want to float this nail polish over the image and not push down too hard and not like scrape your brush across the image because you will mess up the image. All right, and the good thing about clear stampers is you can turn it over and see what it looks like. You know, you know, try to stay in the lines as much as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It has a small area that I can fill in for like the stick of the lollipop. So I'm just taking a tan nail polish and slowly going in and filling that in with my thin liner brush. It's really that simple. It's just coloring. And after I color it in, if you need a second coat, you can put a second coat on there. Um, depending on the base color on your nails, I'm using a white base color, so it's gonna, you know, you're gonna be able to see the true colors that I colored in. But sometimes if you use like a darker base color and say you want this neon pink to show up a little bit better, you can also, after you apply the pink polish, apply a little bit of white polish on the stamper on top of the pink, and then that will make the true color stand out. All right, so let's move on to this full image. We have all these little nail polish bottles. You know, I allowed it to sit on the stamper for a few minutes so the black can dry a little bit. So I used different, I tried to use a bigger brush for this one, but my brush was all frayed. So I ended up using a different brush later. These nail polish bottles, I kind of wanted some neon nail polishes, especially since I had a white nail polish base on my nails. So I use a variety of different Twinkle Tea stamping polishes that can also be used as regular polish. I also used, you know, regular polish too. Um, so you see I switched to a dotting tool. Again, if you're using, whatever you're using, you want to kind of have a ball of polish on your dotting tool or your brush because I don't want to touch the image. 
I just kind of want the polish to touch the image. I don't want the brush or the dotting tool to scrape against the image because if you do that, you can kind of move the design around. So I have a small little ball and I like to kind of tap the polish on there. You can't really see that in the video, but I'm kind of like slowly floating, slowly tapping the polish in the area. So I don't drag the polish on the black too much or on the outline because it can ruin the design if you touch it. The design is going to want to lift up. So now I'm switching to a different color. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. Just whatever you want, wherever you want the different colors to be, just do that. And you can work really slowly with this because we're going to allow these polishes to completely dry on the stamper. So you don't have to work fast with this technique. Okay, now I switched over to my small brush again. Remember to have a little bubble of, or a dollop, whatever you want to call it, of nail polish on the brush and just kind of use little tapping motions to spread the polish out. So I'm continuing to fill in all of these nail polish bottles, but you don't have to. So typically, depending on the length of your nails, you can kind of see like, how many nail polish bottles you would need to fill in and since my nails are short I honestly didn't have to fill in every single one of these it's just like where you position your design if some of the polishes won't fit on your nail then you can not fill those in and they'll it will save you a little bit of time so you don't have to fill in the entire image like I did so that's the finished product and we're gonna move on to our last design that I'm going to show you. So I stamped this little cute nail polish watching pose hand design. So with this design, I'm going to start with the fingernails and I'm going to paint them a sparkly red color. Since the fingernails are really tiny, you want to make sure you're using your tiniest nail art brush. Or if you're using a dotting tool, use a tiny dotting tool or maybe even a toothpick. So I have a little tiny ball of nail polish on my brush. And I'm just kind of, you know, throwing it on the nails. And depending on which nail polishes you're using, you might have to do a second coat. It depends. If you're using a stamping polish st to fill these in, stamping polishes are usually a little bit thicker, so you might be able to get away with one coat. But depending on if you're using a regular nail polish, you might need a second coat, so it'll show through. Just make sure you're, turn you're flipping the design over to kind of see what it looks like on the top. And when I say flip the design over, I mean flip the stamper over so you can see what the design looks like. You want to let this dry for a couple minutes before you move on to the next part. So since I let the nail polish dry, I am going to, you can, you know, outline the little nails, you know, draw the skin tone around the nails. But if the nail polish is dry, it's okay if I put a little bit of the brown nail polish on top of the fingernails or the red nail polish because it's going to be behind that, if that makes sense. So I don't have to be super perfect about that because I already applied the nails and they're dry. I'm not going to smear them and you're not going to be able to see the brown nail polish when you stamp the nail. So it's okay if you get a little bit of the skin tone color on top of the red, which is the nails. Or if you don't want to get the skin tone color on top of the nails, then you can just carefully go around them and be precise <laughs> but if you painted the skin tone before you painted the fingernails you don't want to get the skin tone on the nails because then the nails will be your skin tone color i really hope that makes sense if you have any questions about how i'm explaining things just leave them in the comments and i'll try to explain it better all right so now i have my skin tone on there i let that dry for a few minutes and now I'm filling in the sleeve image and this is a large image so I'm just taking the actual nail polish brush and carefully you know filling in this image since this, it is a little bit bigger 
and it would take forever to fill it in with a small brush but you know do whatever works for you just be careful not to smear the lines on the image so now it's time to transfer the image to our nails so the first image should be completely dry because you know I was doing multiple images at one time so I'm taking my sticky base coat I'm using Orly Bonder and I'm going to apply that to my nail color I didn't mention before but I painted two coats of white and I let it dry completely and there's no top coat on my nails so don't apply top coat just apply your base color I applied my oily sticky base coat and I let it dry for about 15 to 20 seconds now I'm going to center the design on my nails and just slowly push that down where I want it and roll it a little bit to get it off the stamper and there's our design all right so we're gonna repeat that process Again, I'm using the Orly Bonder base coat. If you have the Maniology sticky base coat, it'll work the exact same way. I'm applying a thin layer of this base coat onto a dry base color, and my base color is white. I'm going to let that dry for 15 to 20 seconds. You don't want it to be completely dry, but you don't want it to be wet either. All right, so I'm taking my design. I'm, I'm trying to center it where I want it. And then I'm going to push the design on my nails and then roll the stamper off my nail. And you can see the little nail polish is stuck. You can go around and push them down, make sure they're on there good. And you'll just clean up with, you know, a some acetone and a cleanup brush. So the last image is a little bit bigger, so I'm going to apply it to my thumbnail so you can see the entire image. I'm applying my Orly Bonder base coat, allowing it to sit for 15 to 20 seconds. Then I'm going to take my nail stamper and kind of see where I want to center the design. I'm going to have it at an angle. And then once I'm happy, I'm just going to push the stamper down and then roll the stamper off. And that's the design. I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then I'm gonna show you how I apply the top coat. So I have my KB Shimmer angled cleanup brush and I'm just taking a little bit of acetone on my brush and just cleaning up any excess nail polish that got onto my skin, you know, cleaning up the little cuticle area. I'm going to do the same thing with this little nail polish bottle design, just removing any extra design that's on my skin. Just take a little bit of acetone on your cleanup brush and just remove any excess. And be careful when you're removing any images on the top. I just kind of like apply the brush to the excess and it kind of just melts off. We're almost done, y'all. So I'm using Maniology's Smudge Free Top Coat. And this is a water-based top coat, so if you have a water-based top coat from another nail polish company, feel free to use that one. But I highly suggest using a smudge-free top coat because you don't want to do all this work and get to the end of the design and you, you smear your design. That's going to be heartbreaking. Um, I just float the top coat over the design. Like, you don't want to get too detailed with this. You don't want to make sure you're hitting every single spot on your nail. You just want to get the top coat on that. If you don't have a water-based top coat, you can just float your top coat over the design. Just be really, really careful. All right, so after I applied the water-based top coat, I'm going back in with just my regular top coat and being more thorough with it because I know I'm not going to smear my design at all. So I'm doing as many strokes as I want to do, going back and forth, making sure to cap the free edge, all that stuff. But you don't want to do that at first because you will smear your, you will smear your design. Black nail polish, just it just wants to smear. This design is done. I have one more reverse stamping video I'm going to show y'all hopefully next week. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video. 
If you like this video and it was helpful, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment letting me know what you want my next nail stamping video to be. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.